Hey, what's up? Iron Tamer here. And today, I'm very excited to show you the new issue of Strength Matters magazine. And this is the first time I've been published right there. Redefining Beast Mode in Strength Matters magazine. I'm going to be doing, hopefully, an ongoing thing with Strength Matters that we're going to call Lessons from the Old Time Strongman. Gur, um, there's me down at the bottom. This particular article is called Efficiency Versus Effort Part 1, Redefining Beast Mode. And if you were at the Strength Matters Conference in San Diego, I gave a little preview of this during my show, um, talking about the idea of what does it mean to train in beast mode. And when I started playing around with the idea of efficiency versus effort, because I'm of the opinion, and I can back it up with results, that efficiency is superior to effort every single time, no matter what the endeavor. Uh, not just in physical training, but in anything that we do. Effort goes back to trying really hard, right? And we've talked about trying what trying really means. Um, so what is efficiency? Efficiency is doing whatever it takes to get the job done in the most effortless manner possible. Um, one of the biggest compliments that I can possibly imagine receiving is if I do some sort of a feat of strength or something like that and someone says, wow, I really enjoyed that. You made that look easy. To do something that's difficult and make it look easy is a huge compliment in my opinion. Think about um, Cirque du Soleil performers who are doing these acrobatic, extremely advanced, contortion, gymnastic type move, um, aerial stuff and tumbling and whatever like that. They're doing it usually in some strange costume and they keep this smile or this impassive look on their face and they look relaxed even though you know that what they're doing requires a certain amount of muscular expenditure or effort in that sense. What you don't ever see them do is trying really hard. Their job is to make things look easy and to entertain the crowd. So no matter how difficult the movement is or how difficult the feat of strength is or whatever we're talking about, no matter how difficult these things are, they always appear in the um, masterful version. They always appear to be relatively effortless. Even if you can see that there's a lot of exertion going on, there's nothing wasted there. So even if there is some muscular effort in that sense going on, you don't see anything being wasted. So that phone's ringing there a little bit. Um, so the idea of being as efficient as possible with your technique, with what you do during your training sessions, with everything like that is um, sort of a, the guiding principle for what I do and the way I approach things. And this has come to me through from many different directions, many different sources. Um, I think initially the idea that I got from Pavel was strength is a skill and it should be practiced as such. Um, moving further into that direction, working with Dennis Rogers as a mentor and him telling me to always make it look good and the crowd doesn't want to see you attempt to do something and fail. The crowd wants to see the drama that goes along with you successfully completing a feat. Um, and then moving on into stuff that I've talked about with Paul McElroy where you stay inside your comfort zone during training to expand that comfort zone to engulf your old limits and stuff that I've talked to Adam Glass and Frankie Ferris about with uh, working within your limitations so that your limits expand. Um, all of this stuff goes back to efficiency versus effort. And when I talk about in Strength Matters magazine, the beast mode is this exhibits itself in nature if we stop and objectively observe things. Um, when I decided to write the article and was looking for some information on what beast mode really meant, I looked up, uh, did an internet search and found all these different memes of uh, beast mode with these animals and, and these dudes with animal heads and chicks with lion's faces and stuff and, and um, 
all of these cliche sayings like give 110% or conquer or uh, blast your biceps or, or whatever, you know, any of this stuff that has to do with working really hard and trying really hard and, and you know, your warm-up is my workout or I think I got that one backwards, but, um, you know, somewhere your competition is working harder than you. And we live in this culture here in the, in the West of in order to succeed, we have to try hard, work hard, and outperform our competition. Um, and that has led very organically, I believe, to the idea that effort is somehow equal to results, that if you put more effort in, you will somehow get a better result. And I don't think that that's necessarily the case. Um, take, for example, the king of beasts. If we're going to talk beast mode, we've got to talk about the lion. He's the king of beasts. Have you ever seen what lions really do? I go to the zoo sometime and go to the lion enclosure and you're expecting to see some beast mode stuff going on, but really probably what you're going to find, unless it's feeding time, is you're going to find a bunch of lions laying around asleep because that's what they do. They're like house cats, They're like great big house cats with feet this big and, and, and a head this big and, and a big old cat up under the, hat, the head too. So what they do is they're laying around just napping, sleeping, they might roll over. They might play a little bit and have some fun. Feeding time comes and they'll get up and eat because that's an interesting thing for them to do. But that's what the captive lions look like. And from what I've seen, I've never been out in the wild with lions before, but from what I've seen on documentaries, TV, and that sort of thing, wild lions are much the same. They lay around, they sleep about 18 or 20 hours a day. And then when it's time to go to work, they get up, they go out, they find, the say, the herd of wildebeest. And the, the lion that's in charge, usually it's a female, you know, because that's, that's how their society is set up in a, in a pride alliance, but the one in charge will scan, scan, scan. Okay, where is the biggest, meanest, sharpest horned, biggest hoof, most muscular, terrifying, mighty warrior of a wildebeest in this herd? Okay, he's right over there. Good. That's good to know because I'm going to go over here and I'm going to attack this weak, sick, three-legged little broken down raggedy old or young animal that can't really fight back very much we're all going to gang up on him take him back and we're going to have dinner and we're going to stay away from from the big bad mammy over there so they do that and they go and they take it down and if it's a successful hunt they get food and they take it back and i will wager that they have zero self-esteem issues tied up in not hitting a pr on a wildebeest because all that matters to them is the accomplishment of the objective. They go out, they find food, they catch and kill the food, they take it back to, to the pride, and they eat. Then they go back to sleep. So what does that look like in the gym for us? We have our objective, our goal, whatever it is. Lift a heavier weight, lose some body fat, whatever the thing is that's driving you. You go into the gym, and you go in and you do whatever amount of work it takes today to move you in the direction of that goal and anything beyond that is an inefficiency and an inefficiency is literally wasted effort so be as efficient as possible if five sets of five arbitrarily pulling that out of the air is going to be enough to get the job done why do ten sets of five why well I enjoy training I enjoy training too I love training the thing that I love more than training, that I enjoy more than training, is being better than I was. I would rather be stronger than train, if that makes any sense. They're intimately connected with each other. That's, that's a fact. But for me, the training is a means to an end. I enjoy the training a great deal. Some of the stuff that I do is quite meditative, and that's the goal at hand. Some of the stuff that I do is predicated upon achieving some new thing or, or a new level of, of mastery or expertise or strength in some other thing. And today's training is moving me in that direction, no matter what that direction is. So you have to know where you're going. You have to have that definiteness of purpose to get there. And you have to just show up and do the work, whatever that amount of work is. It may be more, it may be less. But the idea that I want to just keep stressing is doing more work doesn't equal more results. Trying harder usually winds up not getting as good a result as, as just doing the minimal effective amount. You know, that which does not kill me makes me usually have to have surgery if I stick at it long enough. So I don't want to do those things. I want to get better. I don't want to get tired.
I want to get better. I don't want to get broken. I want to be, I want to know in my heart that I'm the guy, and, and I want the evidence to show that I was the guy who was able to achieve the objective, not the guy who tried really hard and almost made it. Think about that. What's more important, the result or the effort you put into it? For me, I'm going to go with the result every single time. Um, so this has been Deep Thoughts with Uncle Tamer. And um, check out Strength Matters Magazine, um, strengthmatters.com. Um, check me out on Facebook. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, please do. Um, Iron Tamer Dave Whitley on Facebook, at Iron Tamer on Twitter and Instagram. So um, please follow me, and I appreciate it. Stay strong.